you're gonna be spending. Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about, well, trucks kind of like the TRX. We'll be talking about the TRX in today's video, and whether or not you should buy a commuter car if you're gonna be driving a truck like this. And if you have an extremely short attention span, the answer is no. But if you actually wanna hear the reasoning behind it, then we'll get into that in today's video. And then after I talk about the whole like commuter car thing and big trucks and horrible gas mileage and all that kind of stuff, I am gonna be giving an update on the new 2021 Raptor at the end of today's video. So if you're interested in that, then stay. If you're not, then, well, the first half of this video will be about TRXs, Raptors, commuter cars, all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, Let's get right into it. If you listen very, very closely, every time that you cold start a uh, TRX or any sort of like Hellcat powered vehicle, you can hear the quiet sobbing of environmentalists. Just, just listen. Okay, okay, that comment about the environmentalist was kind of rude. I'm just kidding. And this is uh, kind of like my daily procedure of getting in the truck. Remote start it, and then I go obviously start it up, power fold the mirrors out, make sure the music's not on so we don't get copyright infringement. And also, you know what's really annoying you know, that I noticed recently? If you guys look at the drive mode select, look at the top of the rack. The top of the rack on the TRX in the drive mode select has the lights on that you can't get as an option from the factory. Like, that's annoying. Why did you do that, Ram? A quick moment of silence for my uh, bank account because we've been averaging 8.4 miles per gallon. But since we're talking about fuel economy in today's video, then we're going to uh, press OK so that we reset the fuel economy. And you guys will be able to see what we end up uh, averaging over this little trip. I mean, idling, we're getting a 7.6 miles per gallon. Oh gosh, this truck, I love it. If you guys are wondering, the uh, TRX somehow idles at 4.7 miles per gallon. Not exactly sure how that works, but we're gonna reset the fuel economy again so we can get a more accurate reading from um, our little trip here. But let's get in the topic of today's video because I've had a bunch of people ask me this question about for their personal use. And then also a lot of people just ask me, hey, are you gonna be getting a commuter car now that you have a TRX that gets abysmal fuel economy? I mean, the Raptor at least got about 14 miles per gallon on average, whereas I've been averaging, you know, eight to nine miles per gallon here in the TRX. And for me personally, I'm not going to do it. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I don't think it's worth getting a commuter car. So I ran the cost for you guys and I ran these based off of my current fuel economy numbers with this truck and based off the assumption you're going to drive 1500 miles a month, which I drive a little bit more than that now. I, some months are around there, um, but I feel like that's a pretty good amount. That's 18,000 miles a year. The average person only drives about, I think, 12 to 15,000 miles a year. So I did all my math based off of the assumption you're gonna drive more than the uh, average average uh, person. And if we base off the assumption we're gonna drive 1500 miles a month, getting eight and a half miles per gallon in the TRX, then you are going to be spending about $530 a month in fuel if you have to. So right now um, in Utah, it's a little bit cheaper than other places I've noticed, but if I get premium, it's actually under $3, but I did my math based off of the cost of fuel being $3 a gallon. Um, and that's, you have to put premium in the TRX. So that's kind of where all this math comes from. So you're about 530 bucks a month filling up the TRX, getting eight and a half miles per gallon, and assuming the fuel cost is about $3 a gallon. I understand some places are more expensive and other places are less expensive, but that's kind of what I uh, ran the uh, math off of. Now, let's talk about a commuter car because a lot of people are like, okay, well then, if it's gonna be so expensive to just drive the truck, I mean, that's, that's a car payment. 500 bucks a month, that is a car payment. So why not get a commuter car, save yourself on some gas? Well, I ran the numbers. If you get a commuter car that gets 30 miles per gallon and you drive 1500 miles a month, you're gonna be spending, and again, same cost, let's say three, You and you might be a little bit less in gas because you might not have necessarily have to do premium, but I just wanted everything to be equal. So if you're, again, paying $3 a gallon, then you're gonna be spending 150 bucks a month in fuel cost. Okay, what if you get a car that has like 35 miles per gallon on average? And I feel like 30 to 35 is pretty good for most commuter cars. Some cars are not that high, but I feel like that's a pretty good range. If you get 35 miles per gallon, then you're spending about $129 a month in gas. So you're saving yourself a substantial amount of money. I mean, on the one side, 
if you have a if you get the car that gets 35 miles per gallon on average and you know 129 dollars a month versus 500 you're saving yourself 400 dollars a month in fuel costs hypothetically however I don't think things are that simple, and this is why I'm not gonna get a commuter car, and this is why I don't think that it's worth getting a commuter car. So the first expense that you have to take into account is just the expense to buy the car. Now, I know there's some people that are gonna say, okay, well, just get an inexpensive, like $500, $1,000 commuter car. The problem with getting a car that cheap is usually cars that are that cheap have a ton of miles on them, and if a car has a lot of miles on it, I don't care what manufacturer makes it, you're going to have maintenance things that are gonna pop up on the car. And so you're gonna to have to basically have this reoccurring monthly payment on the car in the form of maintenance costs. And so, yes, you could do that and maybe you'll get lucky. Maybe you'll find, you know, the one in a million Toyota Camry, 1999 Toyota Camry for 500 bucks that was taken care of so well that it doesn't need any maintenance and it just freaking just drives fantastic and you don't have any issues. But for the rest of us that can't find that one in a million 1999 Toyota Camry, you're probably gonna have to spend some money on the car. And depending on you know how much reliability you want out of the car will determine how much you're gonna spend. Again, just kind of like a general rule of thumb, the newer the car, the lower the mileage, the less of a chance you're gonna have issues with the car. And for commuter cars, I guess the good thing is that they're relatively inexpensive now. I worked at a dealership for three years and I sold tons of commuter cars, uh, especially to like college kids, uh, because they're again, wanting something that's good gas mileage, cheap on insurance, uh, cheap to maintain as well. And so the average kind of like price that I saw for most of these commuter cars that I feel like is a reasonable car to get in terms of having low enough mileage that you're not gonna have a ton of maintenance issues, uh, it was around the 10 to $15,000 range. And yeah, there were some cars that were a little bit under that, but it, they usually had quite a bit of mileage on them. And so realistically to get like a relatively reliable commuter car, you're probably gonna have to spend 10 to $15,000. That's expensive. <laughs> so let's say that you're like, okay, well that's fine. I won't go and spend 10 to $15,000 up front. I'll just finance it. General rule of thumb with financing is about every $5,000 you finance, depending on term and credit and all that kind of stuff, is usually about 70 to $130 a month. So we'll just go in the middle at 100 bucks a month. Let's say that every $5,000 you finance is 100 bucks a month. So that $10,000 commuter car is now a $200 a month car payment. That $15,000 commuter car is now a hundred, or sorry, $300 a month car payment. And that, you know, $20,000 commuter car is now a $400 a month car payment. You guys get where I'm going with this. So already just from the car payment perspective, you might already be spending more money than what you were spending before just driving around a truck that gets horrible gas mileage. So I definitely think that's something that should be taken account um, is just the cost of the car. And then that doesn't even take into account insurance. So for the truck, you know, especially if you get a Hellcat truck like this, insurance is gonna be a little bit more expensive than a car. I'm paying 170 bucks a month right now, which is more expensive than I want to pay. Uh, my Raptor, I was only paying about 120, 130 bucks a month. So kind of feel a little bit uh, sad on that. But I mean, on a commuter car, you're gonna be less money. If you're uh, older, then you'll be able to get better insurance than me. You'll probably be able to get in that 50 to 60 bucks a month range. Um, if you're kind of closer to my age, then you'll probably be in that 100 to maybe $120 a month range. Again, depending on your driving history and all that kind of stuff. And so if we take into account the cost of insurance plus the cost of the car, AKA the car payment, then that extra 300 or $400 a month that you were saving in gas costs, you're now paying in a car, a second car payment and a second insurance payment. And so you're driving around this commuter car thinking that you're saving money when in reality you're spending the same amount of money or potentially more money than if you had just driven the truck around. Now the last thing that I do wanna say that does kind of go to the benefit of the commuter car, let's say that all things are equal, let's say that you got it so that you are you know, maybe saving a little bit of money by driving a commuter car that's pretty much negligible, a few bucks a month, or maybe you're you know, breaking even. There is an inherent benefit to having a commuter car and that's the fact that you would have another car to put mileage on so that you aren't putting as many miles on the truck because truck miles are more expensive than car miles, not just from a fuel economy standpoint, but also from a running cost standpoint. If something breaks on this truck, right right now this truck's covered under warranty. But 
once this truck's not covered under warranty, if something breaks, it's gonna be more expensive to replace something on a big pickup truck, whether it's a Hellcat truck like this or a diesel truck or just a regular half ton, than it is to replace something on a four cylinder, you know, Toyota Camry or Honda Civic or, you know, some sort of like stereotypical commuter car. And then on top of that, just your regular run of the mill stuff is also gonna be less expensive. Tires, I mean, these big truck tires, you, when you have to replace all four corners, I mean, for nice off-roading tires like this, you're looking at over a thousand bucks, easy, even if you get a good deal on them. Um, but sometimes, I mean, depending on the tires you get, you can be up to $2,000. Whereas on a commuter car, you can get new shoes for only about, you know, three to four to 500 bucks, depending on where you get the tires from. Um, so there is an inherent benefit to putting more mileage on a commuter car. So like, I know I said at the beginning of the video that my answer was no, and <laughs> I'm, I'm still standing by that. Uh, I don't think it's worth it for me personally because like the money's the same and I'd rather drive this around than drive something like that. And I'm not bagging on Nissan. I'm just saying like, this is way more comfortable to drive. I enjoy it way more. Um, but I mean, like once you take into account all of the cost saving and just everything that's associated with it, you aren't really saving that much money. Um, or if you are saving money, it's pretty much negligible. And so I would say, just drive your truck. Don't worry about getting a commuter car unless you're really worried about the cost of tires and the cost of maintenance on the truck. Um, and yeah, but I mean, realistically, if you're really worried about fuel economy, then I, I just wouldn't buy a truck. I would just buy something else that gets better fuel economy. And uh, that's the uh, fuel economy part of today's video. And uh, let's get into the quick update now with the uh, Raptor and all that. So I just looked at the runtime on that clip and it's almost 10 minutes. So I gotta be really fast with this because I do not want this to be an extremely long video. And I at least have to have my videos be 10 minutes long or else I don't make like any money on them with uh, YouTube. It's kind of just how YouTube system works. Like if you have a video that's less than 10 minutes long and you have a video that's 10 minutes long, the video that's 10 minutes long will literally make like twice as much per view. So I just, I just gotta, I gotta do what I can to stay in business here, guys. Um, but anyways, update for the Raptor. So I should be ordering the new 2021 Raptor soon. I think ordering is going to open up sometime this month, it sounds like. And so I'll be making a video about that. That's the update is the ordering should happen soon. Now, in terms of arrival, I'm guessing the new Raptor is going to come at the end of this year. And that kind of brings me to an interesting situation. So I'm not going to say what car it is. I'm just going to kind of leave this up uh, to you guys. But I've been offered one of the dealerships that I film at happens to have a sports car that I've always wanted to own that holds its value very, very well. And that's something that's very important to me because I go through cars so quick. I won't buy a car if it's not going to hold its value very well. And this car that this dealership has that they've offered me is something I've always wanted to own. It holds its value well. I'm considering buying it for the channel because it's about the same price as what the new Raptor is going to be. And kind of what the plan would be tentatively is to buy that car, make content on it for the next four to six months, however long it takes for the Raptor to come in, and then trade that car for the Raptor. If that sounds appealing to you guys, let me know in the comment section uh, below. I'm, I'm still kind of like on the fence back and forth about it, but it's not like... I'm gonna be spending any extra money because I'm gonna be buying the Raptor anyways. And on top of that, like I said, this car holds its value very well. So hypothetically, I should be able to buy it, drive it for the next four to six months, and then trade it in for about this, or you know, hopefully the same money that I uh, purchased it for. Yeah, I ain't taking that risk. <laughs> um, but yeah, let me know if that's something that would interest you guys. If I got like a sports car for the channel for the next four to six months, because it's uh, pretty much sounds like it's not going to cost me any money out of pocket uh, for the ownership experience. And other than that, if you're stopping for the first time, please subscribe, comment down below what you think. And with our trip, we're almost there. We averaged 12 point, well now 12.7 because we're sitting here, 12.7 miles per gallon which I think is pretty good, but if we aver if we went back the uh, uphill variant, our fuel economy would probably drop back down uh, to like 10 or nine miles per gallon on the uh, uphill, because this is pretty much all downhill.